Using ForeFlight, Garmin Pilot, or other electronic tools to do your weight and balance can be fast and convenient. However, during your check ride, your pilot examiner is likely going to want to know you understand the process. In other words, he or she will want to see your work. So being able to calculate a weight and balance by hand is critical. And once you've been through it a couple of times, you'll see it really isn't that hard. Just so you know, there are a couple of different ways to determine weight and balance. In this video, we'll start with the most simple, the loading graph. When using a loading graph, you will only need to use addition, subtraction, and maybe some multiplication and division. Before we begin, there are five things you'll absolutely have to have to be successful. First, you'll need a weight and balance table. Please click the link below to download a PDF that includes all of the documents used in this video. The PDF will allow you to see the examples and better allow you to follow along. Second, the aircraft weight limitations. These can be found in Chapter 2 of your POH or the Pilot's Operating Handbook. As you can see, the chart I've created has a space for the critical weight limits. Please write them down. We'll be using them later. Third, the aircraft loading graph. And fourth, the center of gravity limits chart or the center of gravity moment envelope chart. <laughs> wow, those are both a mouthful. Anyway, both can be found in Chapter 6 of your POH. And last but certainly not least, you'll need the formal weight and balance document showing the empty aircraft weight and balance. These are also often kept in Chapter 6 of the POH. A calculator can also be helpful unless you're really good at doing math in your head, which I am not. And now that we have everything, let's get started. Let's pretend that three friends and I are planning to travel to Kansas City, Missouri for some awesome barbecue. We'll be leaving in the afternoon, eating the rest of the day, then coming home the next morning. For the purposes of this exercise, let's pretend that I weigh 185 pounds. Friend number one will weigh 130 pounds. Friend number two weighs 190 pounds. Friend number three weighs 145 pounds. Each person will be bringing 25 pounds worth of luggage. Oh, and the aircraft already has 10 pounds of supplies in it. You know, extra oil, rags, window cleaning supplies, tie down ropes, etc. Can we make the trip? Will we be eating delicious barbecue or will we be arguing about who or what to leave behind? Let's find out. Let's start by figuring out the empty weight without any fuel in the airplane. I like to start with weight because if you're overweight, being out of balance doesn't matter. And I'll explain why we start without fuel in a bit. In the table, decide where you think everyone will sit and where the baggage should go. For our flight, I've put myself and friend number one in the front seat, friends two and three in the back seat, and I've also decided to put all the luggage in baggage area number one. So let's start filling out our chart. <laughs> First, enter the empty weight from the formal weight and balance document at the top of the table. That should be 1,413, and that should go here. Then let's figure the total weight of the front seat passengers. Using my handy-dandy calculator shows that my weight of 185 pounds plus their weight of 130 pounds is 315 pounds. We'll enter that in the space for the pilot and the front passenger. In the back seat, we've got 190 pounds plus 145 pounds equals 335 pounds. And we'll enter that in the appropriate space. Finally, if each of the four passengers brings 25 pounds, that would add up to 100 pounds, and then add the 10 pounds already in the aircraft. That equals 110 pounds. And that will go in baggage area number one space. So if I total all these up, 1,413 plus 315 plus 335, plus 110 equals 2,173 pounds. Write this number in the zero fuel box. Now we can figure out how much fuel we can take. I calculate fuel last because we don't always need full fuel to make a trip. How much fuel can we take? Well, let's start by subtracting the zero fuel weight from the maximum ramp weight. The result is the maximum weight available for fuel. In our case, 2,307 minus 2,173 equals 134 pounds. To figure out how many gallons that would be, divide 134 by 6, and that gives us 22.3333 gallons. <laughs> to make the math easier, let's round down to the nearest gallon. We can't round up because that would be too heavy. And now we need to calculate the weight of 22 gallons of fuel. Multiply 22 gallons by 6, and that equals 132 pounds of weight. We'll add the weight of the fuel to the zero fuel weight to get our current ramp weight, 
or 2,173 plus 132, or 2,305 pounds, and that is two pounds less than the maximum ramp weight. We now know that we can pack everything into the airplane and still be underweight. Now we can look at balance, and to do this, we'll need to use a loading graph. This is the loading graph for a Cessna 172N. However, most loading graphs have the same components. The left axis is weight. This graph uses increments of 10 pounds per line. The bottom axis indicates the moment and uses increments of 500 pound inches per line. It's very important to understand the scale used for each axis to ensure you read the graph correctly. The next feature is the loading lines. Each of these lines represents a loading station, for example, the front seat, the back seat, baggage area number one, baggage area number two, and the fuel tanks. We'll use this graph to figure out the moments for each of these loading locations. Let's start by entering the moment value for the empty aircraft in the proper space. Remember, this value comes from the formal weight and balance document for the aircraft. In this case, the moment is 53,661 pound inches. Enter that value in the moment column for basic empty weight. Let's start by finding the moment for the front seat passengers. Take the total weight of the front passengers from the chart, 315 pounds. Look up the left axis until you find that value. At that point, draw a horizontal line all the way across the chart. Now look for the front passenger loading line. Where these two lines meet, draw a vertical line all the way to the bottom axis. Where the vertical line crosses the axis, read the moment value. In this case, it appears to be just past 11,500, so we'll estimate it to be 11,650 pound inches. Place that value in the moment column for the pilot and front passenger. Now we need to do the same process for the rear seat passenger and baggage area number one. Since the process is the same, let's speed through it. We can figure out the zero fuel moment by adding all the other moments together. So 53,661 plus 11,650 plus 24,500 plus 11,000 equals 100,811. And we can put that number in the zero fuel moment area. Using the same process, find the moment for 132 pounds of fuel or 6,000 pound inches. Enter that number in the total fuel moment area. Then add the zero fuel moment and the total fuel moment to calculate the total ramp moment. In our case, it's 106,811. Can we start our engines now? Well, yes, we can. But there is one more thing we need to do to be sure we're within weight and balance limits for takeoff. We need to find our total takeoff weight by subtracting out the fuel used for startup, taxi, and runup. Estimates for this can be found in the sample weight and balance table in Chapter 6 of your POH. In our case, Cessna estimates the total to be 7 pounds of fuel, or just over a gallon. They also give us the moment value of 300 pound inches. Since these are being removed, we, sub sub we should subtract the weight from the total weight. 2,305 minus 7 gives us 2,298 pounds and subtract the moment, or 106,811 minus 300 leaves us 106,511. Let's enter these values in our table. Now we can use the moment envelope chart to see if our aircraft is within center of gravity limits. To do this, we will graph the intersection of weight and moment. Let's take a quick look at this chart. For the Cessna, the left axis is weight and the bottom axis is moment. What we want is for the charted weight and moment to be within one of these two envelopes. This is the normal envelope, and this is the utility category envelope. For most flights, the intersection of weight and moment should fall within the normal category envelope. To use the chart, find the total weight on the left axis. In this case, 2,298 pounds. We'll round pessimistically to 2,300. At that point, draw a horizontal line all the way across the chart. Now, find the moment on the bottom axis. Our moment was 106,511. For safety, I'm going to round pessimistically to 107,000. 
At this point, draw a vertical line straight up. Where the two lines cross is the center of gravity. For our aircraft, we are done. We can now state with relative surety our aircraft is within weight and balance limits. Now, we can start our engines and head for that awesome barbecue. Now, here's the bonus question. Will we still be within our weight and balance envelope when we land? Let's say the flight takes one hour and we burn 10 gallons of fuel. We will learn how to do performance calculations in a later video, but for now, we'll use 10 gallons. Remember, to find the weight of the fuel, we must multiply the gallons by 6. 10 times 6 equals 60 pounds of fuel. Next, look up the moment of that used fuel. The loading charts indicate that it will be 3,000 pound inches. Write the two values in the appropriate boxes. Then, subtract the fuel weight from the total takeoff weight. In this case, 2,298 minus 60 equals 2,238 pounds. Finally, recalculate the total moment. 106,511 minus 3,000 equals 103,511 pound inches. Plot the new numbers on the moment envelope chart. We'll use a different color to show the differences. And, according to the chart, we will still be within limits when we land. Congratulations, you've just completed a complete weight and balance calculation. Now you've seen the quick and easy way to calculate weight and balance for a Cessna 172N. If you'd like some more practice with this method, there is another scenario and the answer in the attached PDF. So you don't fly a Cessna 172N? There may be a couple of more steps you need to take to complete the calculation. Plus, there is a more precise way to calculate weight and balance. Both require a little more math, but can give you more specific answers. Please check out the next videos if you'd like to learn more about weight and balance calculations.